Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to our uh, new series. Yeah, you can clap uh, for the Lord. Uh, also, we want to clap because uh, it was uh, an, uh, uh, really just uh, encouraging Lala Love. Meron ba rito mga balik Lala Love, mga katinbahay ng Lala Love, just like Jay earlier mentioned. Yes, but today we're going to start a brand new, a brand new um, series. Sobra po ako excited sa series na to, kaya hindi ko alam kung paano ako sisimulan at uh, siguro inumun ako ng tubig, right? Second, gugrit ko lang po yung mga tao sa internet live feed joining us. Hello everybody. Uh, you know what? I bless that you guys are joining us tonight, but it's iba pa pag live. So next week, if you have time, just come here and join us in the multipurpose hall. So welcome those joining us in live feed. All right, just like what Jeff mentioned, uh, actually he's been he's fondly called B-Boy, right? So he is our cluster head for our marketing department, our marketing committee here in Big Friday. So everything that you see about in, in marketing, uh, their team produces it. So uh, praise God for these men and women that are very, very excellent for God's work. Because exactly that's the point tonight, being excellent for God's amazing work that He is doing through in and around us. Alam mo, nakakatuwa because uh, probably about 10 years ago, a little bit less than 10 years ago, I embarked on a small video project. Sabi ko, na nasa nagtatrabaho pa ako, sabi ko, I want to interview a few people and ask them a simple question. You know, I ask what I ask them. I ask them a simple question. I ask them, what is your purpose in life? Okay, what is your purpose in life? And akalain mo ba naman, nakita ko, I got this video again, and I saw it again, and I think I want to share it to you tonight just to give you the right, I guess, intro to our session for tonight, which is work design based on God's Word. So here's a video that I saw uh, that I did 10 years ago. Here's it. What's your purpose in life? My purpose in life is to basically work hard so that I could uh, provide the basics for my family, for my two children. Um, basics meaning uh, housing, clothing on their backs, and um, food. What's your purpose in life? Well, my purpose in life, well, in the broad aspect, I want to do best in terms of work, my relationship with my friends, my family. I want to give them a good life. Well, including me, of course. Hi, I'm Boris. I'm 19 years old, currently studying in Ateneo de Manila University, and I'm studying to discover myself. Your purpose in life? Um, my purpose in life is to be financially stable so that I will be able to support my very own family in the future and hopefully promote the art of dance on the side by doing what I love to do best, which is to dance. Parap, sir. Tapad yung mga pangarap natin, maging successful sa trabaho, maayos yung mga mukhay natin. Uh, siguro yun lang sir yung may hiling ko sa ngayon. Uh, Kevin, what's your purpose in life? I'm on the pursuit of knowledge. By doing so, I enjoy to read books, studying history, and observing people. Even just watching YouTube videos and all of them, people have to say generally anything. I want to know everything. What's your purpose in life? My purpose in life? Ito, itong wallet ko. Now I'm working for my kids, my wife and my son. So my purpose in life is to provide for my family. Okay, Frances, go. Hi, Fran Hi, I'm Frances. Um, I'm, a, I'm currently 19. I'm, sorry, sorry. Okay, take, take two. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Hi, I'm Frances. I'm 19 years old and I'm currently a student. I'm taking up a business course because... Wait, no, sorry. I'm not conscious. No worries. Can I just look at there? Sure, 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 sure. Frances, what's your purpose in life? Hi, I'm Frances. I'm 19 years old and I'm currently uh, studying as a business major student. Um, I want to study well because I want to do good in business and um, once I do good in business, I want to accumulate that certain amount of wealth um, to support a higher purpose in life, my advocacy, which is education. Uh, my purpose in life is to provide for my family and make sure that my kids grow to be law-abiding citizens and 
not fearing citizens. Hi, Mar! Hi, I'm Marian. I'm 24 and I'm currently a business consultant in a multinational firm. So, my purpose in life, actually, it's kind of hard to answer that. I'm not yet sure as of the moment. Well, hindi ko pa actually naisip yun. Parang first, first time to, to encounter that question. But yeah, hopefully I'll find out soon and thanks for reminding me. So, that's the short video I wanted to share to you at the start. So, what did you notice? What did you notice about when I asked them a simple question, what is your purpose in life? If you've noticed, seven out of the ten equated their purpose in life to their work, to their career, and the ability to build financial stability. Isn't that amazing? The question has never been about work. The question has never been about career. But when you ask them what their purpose in life is, seven out of ten equated their purpose into their work. And that number is striking, 70%. And that's why when I was going through this, I also had another personal research about, about work. Getting 70% may do interesting because you know one of the things I also realized is that when I was still working, and now that I know of people who are still working in corporate, I realized that 70% of their waking up hours, 70% of your waking up hours, some of you, is actually devoted to your work or to your career. Let me give you an example. I have a friend who needs to work in Makati at 8 a.m. That person needs to wake up at 5 a.m. in order to be able to leave at, at around 6, so that he can be or 5.30, so he can, he can be in, in, in Makati by around 8 o'clock. So assuming lang, direct computation of numbers. 8 to 5, okay, so I'll uh, uh, 5 o'clock, and then dalawa also to get home. So, kating yang 7 o'clock sa bahay, manonot siya ng TV, kakain siya, magpakwentuhan siya, matutulog siya ulit na mamandang 11 o'clock. Pag kinumpit mo po yun, 15 hours out of the 19 hours that he is awake provides for a 70% split on the number of people that is devoting their time on your job. So, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, 70% ng oras mo ay eh naka-devote lang sa trabaho mo. Sabi mo, sabi mo. 70% ng buhay mo is spent on your career and business and job. So, thank you for being very, very obedient by asking that question. So now, I'm gonna ask each one of you a question. So if it's 70% of your waking up hours is dependent or is, or is invested on the work that you are at, in fact, some of you, more than 70%. Because iba sa inyo, apat na oras na tutulog gabi-gabi. Right? But, but ginawa ko lang average. Can you imagine this? If you are having a work atmosphere or a work-related or a career or a business that is not healthy, that is not productive, do you think the 70% of your waking up hours is being spent wisely? Right? Kaya nung pinakita namin itong mga posters na to, everybody could relate, right? They could relate with all of these posters. Why? Because, you know, it's a repeat, it's, they are uninspired, they are really distressed, and they're instead of being blessed, and, you know, they, and the last one was, nagtatrabaho para mabuhay o nabubuhay para magtrabaho. And I think all of us, or most of us, could actually relate to this. And that's why this new series would really provide a critical component in the journey of the single people that are attending Big Fridays. Why? Because work is such a big component of our lives. And the less we think about it, actually, is that we go into our life with work as if it's just one of those things. In fact, I submit to you, we haven't really thought about what it means to become having the right attitude and perspective towards work. Research have said, let me share to you some of the research that have come out to tell us, the people, when you have the right attitude at the workplace. Let me know if you are one of these people that when you're having the right attitude towards work, you are this. Number one, it helps you achieve the goals and the career success. Right? Having the right attitude also increases self-esteem and confidence in yourself and others. It improves interpersonal relationships. It also improves your motivation for yourself. Imagine, these are just some of the positive influences when you have the right attitude towards work. 
You know that having the right attitude also provides better health? Kaya palang dami nagkakasakit sa opisina. Right? Kasi, if you don't have the right attitude, research shows, having the right attitude provides better health. What about also, it reduces the number of obstacles and difficulties you will encounter. You know, one of the... I don't want to generalize, huh? but one of the most alarming things that I've realized in the workforce today is that so many people give up so easily. Isang bagay lang, or isang ano lang, ayaw na, quit na kagad. You know, reduce the number of obstacles. When you have the right attitude, you will reduce the number of obstacles and difficulties you will encounter. You know, less sick days. Sino dito, gumit na gamit lahat ng mga BL buong taon? You know what? It might be that you have the wrong attitude towards work. Another thing, it produces more energy. Those people who are passionate about in the workplace, who have the right attitude, actually have more energy, right? And then they also, look, look at this, it also improves teamwork. Ganun pala yun. Pag tama attitude mo sa trabaho, tama attitude mo sa workplace, it will improve your teamwork. It overcomes challenges, overcomes challenges. It improves decision-making. Wow! And then it improves customer relations. At, of course, it makes for better leadership skills. Pag tama yung attitude mo, eventually, when you become a boss, you will improve your leadership skills. And, last two, it improves the attitude of other employees. Uy, bago yun ah. Pag maganda ang attitude mo, pati pala yung mga tao around you, nagbabago yung attitude. Tama po ba yun? So, pag bugnutin ka, Dahil ka nakasimangot, pwede mo sa opisina, galit ka sa mundo, guess what? Yung mga tao around you, galit din. Why? Because research says, having the right attitude improves the attitude of other employees, not just you. And look at this. Having the right attitude, research says, increases productivity levels. That's why people are asking, why are there some people more productive than others? Answer? Attitude. And of course, it is stress reduction and management if having the right attitude. So, if these are the workplace attributes that can actually provide the result that you want in your workplace. I don't believe there's anyone here in this place. If I'm going to go around, I don't think there's anyone here. If I tell them, these are really the positive impact that having the right attitude towards work will have on you, I don't think anyone would say, ay, ayoko niyan. I don't want to have better health. I don't want to overcome challenges. Ayoko ng teamwork. Gusto ko lahat kaaway. Ayoko ng more energy. Ayoko ng stress reduction. I mean, of course not, right? All of these things, when you look at them, actually is the goal of each one of you that are in corporate, business, entrepreneur, or whatever career you are in right now. So the question I'm sure you want to ask, is how do we get this right attitude? How do we answer? How do we have the right attitude? Let me submit to you. For you to have the right attitude at the workplace, by the way, kanina po, kaya ganun yung pag-introduce sa akin, gusto ko lang pong sabihin that I have over, by God's grace, 21 years of experience sa corporate. 21 years. So I would be explaining and I would be sharing some of my experience. And just like in any of my talks, and of course you also in live feed, gusto ko lang pong sabihin that uh, whatever I'm gonna share, this is my past. Yun po yung nangyari before. And the Lord used that in His amazing way to bring me where I am now. So I might be sharing certain things that might not be encouraging to some other people or perhaps to a group or to a company at the end of the day. God used all of them to mold me to where I am right now. Okay, baboy, yung usapan na yan, so you can understand that. All right, so going back. How can you have the right attitude in work in order for you to become productive, in order for you to become efficient, for you to become excellent, and more importantly, to look at workplace as a place where it's a place of significance? How can you do that? Well, you have to have the right perspective. And the right perspective flows the right attitude. And so what is now the right perspective towards work? Before I share into you the verses for tonight on how it is to really have the right perspective at the workplace, I also want to share with you an amazing, an amazing concept, an amazing concept that people in the Bible, biblical times, have found out, but, but somewhere, along the, somewhere along the way, some of us 
have forgotten. And this is the concept that there are two things that, that the people in the Bible come, can come into together and really, and really combine them together to come as one. And what is this? The Hebrew word I'm going to share to you is the word avoda. Okay? Avoda. Say that with me. Avoda. Avoda is a Hebrew word, and the word avoda is, is, is means three things in the Hebrew language. It means work, it means worship, and it means service. Let me share to you some examples of how these words were used in the Bible. Everybody, can you read Exodus chapter 34, verse 21? Six days you shall what? Work. So avoda. So avoda means work. In the second verse, Psalm 104, verse 23, everybody read this with me. Then man goes out his work, avoda, to labor until evening. So the first two verses uses the word avoda in the context of the meaning of the definition of work. But look at the third and fourth meaning or description when it was used in the Bible. Everybody, can you read Exodus chapter 8, verse 1? This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. The word worship there was the word avoda. So in, in, in simple definition or simple explanation, we will now realize that worship and work actually means the same. And if you look on the fourth verse, everybody read Joshua, verse 24, 15, 1, 2, 3, go. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, Avoda. So, so Avoda means work, means worship, and means service. So when you look, and here's, 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 here's the perspective. When you look at work, it's not something that is a standalone thing. A game-changing perspective here while you're here, because this is a Bible study, a game-changing perspective for all of us here is to look into work as not just a mere work, but to look at it as worship and service to the Lord. Avoda is a picture of an integrated faith, an integrated faith where life, work, and worship comes in the same root, the same foundation. You know, one of the things that I realized off and on in my start in the journey in my corporate life was that secular and something sacred for me back then was totally separate. Who I was in ministry or who I was in, in church was totally a different person who I was at the workplace. And later on, I realized that the reason I was so frustrated, the reason that I was, I feeling, was so feeling discontented it's oftentimes I'm not motivated, it's because I separate those two things. And until I realize this biblical perspective, this biblical perspective that actually worship is work and vice versa, work can also be a means of worship to the Lord. And that was one of the things that really changed my attitude towards work. Avada suggests, the word avada suggests that our work can be a form of worship where we honor the Lord and serve our neighbors. And that's the change. That is the crossroads. Once you change your perspective that work is not just work, it's a means to honor the Lord, it's a means to serve the Lord, this is what's gonna happen. You will now be working, instead of working for a master, right? You're working for a boss, for a master, you would now be serving the master. Difference of a letter or a phrase, but has a profound impact on the perspective of you and me included in the workplace. See, if, if your perspective is that, ah, kaya pala ako trabaho, kasi I am not working for a master, I'm really working for, serving for a master. My employer is not who I'm seeing right now. The ultimate employer is who? God and Jesus. And that's the fundamental difference because when you're working for a master, it's about labor. But when you're serving the master, it's about love. Kaya pala yung mga ibang tao, pagdating sa trabaho, love na love nila. Pero kailangan ko lang pong bigyan ng word of caution. Yung iba naman, sobrang love ang trabaho, nagiging idol na lang yung trabaho. Iba yun. Okay, hindi po tayo doon. We're, we're, we're coming from the foundation that if you truly love the Lord, as you grow more in your love for the Lord, as you grow more in your understanding of the Lord, that's when you realize, oh no, oh yes, but no, no, not, not no, no, oh yes. Now I'm going to do things for the Lord, and we need to understand the desire to work for a master and having the right mindset, which is to desire to serve the master, comes from the reframing of our perspective about work. 
we need to look at what the Bible tells us. What is the kind of attitude towards work that we need? Clearly, in, in, in this slide, in, in this slide, like the difference there is what? Love. Tama ba? Love? Kakatapos natin love. Eh, kailangan natin pag-usap ulit ang love. Kasi singles, puro love. But seriously, it's that four-letter word that would change your attitude towards work. Some of you here probably is discouraged, dis- discontented, gusto mo na mag-resign, gusto mo na umalis sa trabaho mo, parang nakatingin ka lagi sa kanila, parang saya-saya nila ako, lungkot-lungkot ko. Or baka you're here and then you're complaining because ang sama-sama ng boss mo. Or bakit ibang trabaho, ang ganda-ganda, may pakotse, ikaw, wala. I mean, you, know, you might be thinking, and I pray that you open your hearts tonight because the Lord is going to tell you something. That there is a reason why you're there. There's a reason right now. You might not understand it, but there's a reason right now. So instead of wasting the pain, the suffering, and the lesson, instead of wasting that, embrace it and find out what the Lord is doing in your life right now so that you could prepare for it in the future. And we are going to talk about three verses tonight. And it's from Colossians chapter 23, after 22, 23, 24. And these three verses will be the foundational verses of our entire series on work. So book next week, pag-uusapin ulit to. Three weeks from now, pag-uusapin ulit to. But there are different components we want to press. Like tonight, we're going to press about what is God's idea of word, of work, which is the title of this word. Next week, it's about excel. It's what, what would we, what is the idea of how can you excel in spite of your problems in your workplace? May mga trabaho ba kayo sa workplace? Huwag niyo masyado lakasan, baka kasama niyo sa mesa katrabaho niyo, okay? You know, next week, we're going to talk about problems in the workplace. People, uh, demotivation, discouragement, all of these are next week. And then three weeks from now, we're going to talk about PowerPoint. The power that God provides for us because of His promises. And lastly, at the end, we're going to talk about uh, Outlook. We're going we're gonna to bring four, ex, four corporate people here on the stage four weeks from now, and they will share to us their, their journey, their experiences in the workplace that could inspire and encourage you to truly follow as it is. Everybody, read Colossians chapter 3, 23. One, two, three, go. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. This is a very, very popular verse. We quote this. You see this in one of those, you know, pag paginugil mo, quote Google a work-related verse, this is going to come out, right? People love this. But the prop, not the problem, but the amazing thing about verse 23 is that it's not complete if you don't see verse 22 and verse 24, right? And tonight, we're going to talk about verse 22, verse 23, and verse 24. And verse 22 which is before 23, tama ba? Oh, pinapakiga ko lang, nakikinig pa kayo, okay? What is verse 22? And this is verse 22. Everybody, read this with me. One, two, three, go. Slaves, obey your earthly masters. Binilugan ko po yung everything. Binilugan ko po yung everything. Kasi hindi tayo naniniwala sa everything eh. Okay, continue. And do it, not only when their eye is on you, and to curry their favor, hindi po yan chicken curry, Okay? To carry their favor, but with sincerity of the heart and reverence for the Lord. So if you would look at the context of verse 23, the context is in verse, one of the contexts is in verse 22. And here, the operative word at the start of this command is everything. Let me ask you this. As you listen to me, as you listen to me, and some of you are looking at your phones. Ah, bahalig the notes. Okay, all right. <laughs> Have you been overwhelmed at the workplace? Okay. Have you found yourself in a, in a situation where you're surrounded with difficult people? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you find yourself in a predicament where you have a super demanding boss? Yes. Okay. Wait, 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 okay, na. Uh, guess na natin. <laughs> or perhaps you're not getting along with your office mate due to personality clashes. Or it might be that for some of you here that yung masyado masisipag, you're being stretched with abnormally heavy workload, responsibilities piled up daily, padami na padami responsibility, ang problema, walang promotion, walang salary increase. Ito lang po, Matt. can I ask you something? Ang tanong ko po, kung kayo doon sa any of those, ito lang po ang tanong ko, mahirap ba? And yet, 
And yet, look, look, and yet, look, look at the biblical perspective of work. Look, slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. I was thinking, you know, Paul, Paul would have realized that slaves is not an easy job or it's not an easy work. Alam niyo ba yun? Mas matindi pa po yung slaves sa ano man ang isip nating mga tao ngayon na tumutulong sa atin. Wala po yun. Ang slaves kasi, they have no rights. They have been bought. So they can actually be physically hurt without complaining because the owner owns them, right? Kaya po sila slave. And yet, I was asking myself, why? Why is it that the command is to obey in everything? Ang hirap-hirap na ng trabaho, obey pa in everything. You know why? You know why? Because here's the why. In verse 24, everybody, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. You will receive a reward. And that's why, if you have the right perspective towards work, and you're serving the master, which is Jesus Christ, and you know that Jesus Christ will give you an eternal inheritance, a reward that is so f- out of this world. Alam niyo ba yung bonus of following Jesus out of this world? Of course, because His main reward is not in this world. It's on the other world. But, of course, that doesn't mean that there's also no reward now in the temporary life, which I will share to you also in a bit. So, so that is the context, you know, verse 22, verse 23, and verse 24. So verse 22, first, verse 22 is the what? It's the how of work. We're going to talk about this in the next 20 minutes. We're going to talk about the how of work. Verse 23, which is whatever you do, work with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, is what? It's the what of work. So the how of work, the what of work, and finally, in verse 24, right, you will receive an inheritance from the Lord Jesus Christ is the reward. It is the what? It is the why. Of work. So ito lang po yung simple out natin ng gabi to. The how, the what, and the why. But the most, kasi pag, pag-usapan din natin to next week and then the week after that, I'm not gonna dig deep into a lot of these things. But I will really deal a considerable amount of time in the how. How of work, right? Because it's the word, it's the biblical perspective. And the how of work takes us back to this verse, which is the slaves obey your earthly masters in everything. Alam mo, Kung ikaw isa kang slave, mahirap na yung trabaho mo, sinasabi ka pa ni Paul, Paul, ah, sorry, ikoy, sabi ni Paul, please, obey your earthly masters in everything. Pag, nar- pag narinig mo ba yung word everything, ano yung mapasa utak mo? Okay, thank you. Tinranslate natin. Yes, everything, lahat. Panalo. Yes, but what else? What else? What, what else does that mean? That means, everything means, you could not choose. Right? Everything means there's, a, there's, a, there's an attitude of thoroughness. Meaning, hindi pwedeng papetics, petics. Alam niyo ba yung word na yun? Medyo 80s yan eh, right? Ano ba ngayon ang millennial term ng, term ng petics? Chill. Got it. Pa chill, chill lang kayo. Gano, right? But it, that's not what this verse is saying. Look, this verse is saying everything. You know what, Paul, uh, being, being Paul and being inspired by the Holy Spirit, being used by the Holy Spirit, I believe he deliberately, he deliberately placed this here. He knew, he knew it's going to be difficult. He knew it's going to be tough to follow this verse. He knew if you are a Christian right now and you are professing to the world that you are a follower of Christ, the Lord Jesus knows your predicament. And yet, he placed you there. Why? and allowed you to be in that situation, why? That must be the mindset. You know why? Because when you understand this, your obedience, even in the most difficult of commands, is designed to bring glory to God. If you truly want to serve the Lord. Bakit po importante itong aspekto na to? Because if you are now in a difficult circumstance, instead of you feeling discontented, instead of you feeling frustrated, instead of you feeling, oh, labo naman ito, Gusto ko na mag-chill, chill. Pwede ko maka-chill. Right? Bakit? Kasi asar ka eh. Galit ka eh. You're, you're looking at your external situation and you feel, wow, I want to give up. I want to leave this office. I want to move to another career or whatever. Gusto ko na lang magpahinga. Gusto ko na lang mag-chill out sa bahay. Gusto ko na lang magtinda ng entrepreneur. Maging entrepreneur na lang ako. Right? Why? Why is that? You know why is that? And if you, that is you here, if that is you and you're here and you're listening to the you're also listening on, 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 on social media on internet 
please have an open heart and mind. Because there might be a, a small chance through God's amazing plan, baka ma-miss mo yung plano sa'yo. Baka ma-miss mo. At yun po ang nangyari sa buhay ko. I'm going to share to you my testimony in a bit. And I am so happy the Lord did not allow me to give up or to leave because I would have missed the plan. So let me go back. Mamaya pa po yung story ako. Let's go back. Slaves, obey your earthly masters again in everything. Like ko binabalikan to. Binabalikan na pinabalikan. Why? Because this will minister to you far more amazingly than you can ever imagine. Let me repeat. If you truly understand and believe and claim in faith that God is telling you this, to obey your masters. By the way, yung obey your masters in everything, gusto ko lang pong klaro, pag sinabi na tumalong ka sa building, hindi mo gagawin yan, right? Right? Or pag may sinasabi sa'yo, gumawa ka ng kasalanan, or you falsify documents, or whatever you want to do. Of course, that's not what this means. It's not blind obedience. It's obedience towards work. Klaro lang natin, ha? Kasi baka sabihin nyo, sinabi ni Pastor, lahat daw, everything, gawin. Ito lahat, ginagawa ko na, hindi, hindi ganun. It's really about following everything that the, ma- that the boss is telling you when it comes to work. Why? Because when you do that, when you obey, Paul saw that working for your earthly master is a way to honor and serve the ultimate master of all, which is Jesus Christ. Right? And that's what it means. That's when Paul says everything, he means this. He means full follow mode. Share the, say that with me. One, two, three, go. Full You know why is that important? Because ngayon po, ngayon po, ang mga tao, ang mga, ang mga empleyado, I'm not saying all of you, but perhaps none of you here, but some of you might know some. Some people, employees now, they nitpick, they choose. Ah, gagawin ko to, gagawin ko yan. Ah, ito, hindi ko to gagawin. Right? And it, it's, it's, and when you hear people complaining, when you hear people in corporate complaining of some of the workers nowadays, they nitpick, they choose. If you want to truly, truly find significance in your workplace, you have, to choo- you have to stop choosing. You have to truly give your heart out into everything. There's no shortcuts. Specifically also in the same way in ministry or in even in Christianity, sometimes we don't do this. We choose. Pabalito kong tawak dyan, buffet Christianity. Alam niyo ba yung buffet Christianity? Paano kayo kumakaya ng buffet? Kinipili mo lang, right? Uy, gusto ko to. Angus beef, okay to. Uy, gusto ko to. Scallops. Uy, gusto ko to. Ano? Uy, ayoko nito. Isaw. Whatever it is that you're thinking, right? At the end of the day, you cannot choose because the, obey, the command is obedience in everything. The quality, here's the principle. The quality of the Christian employee should be different from those that do not have Christ in their life. An owner should see it immediately. Kita ka agad dapat. Ang problema ngayon, yung mga ibang sinasabing follower ni Jesus, yun yung mga tamad. Yun yung mga late. Yun yung mga 501 club. Alam namin 501 club? Yung nakatingin sa relos, uy, 450 na. Gamit na. Ready na, ready na. Uy, 455, CR na ako. Uy, 457, balik na ako sa upuan ko. Uy, 5 o'clock, nakatayo na ako. Uy, 501 na, sa elevator na. I mean, why? Does that really provide for us a full follow mode? Nowadays, there are so many compromises in the workplace. So instead of Christians being able to sway people towards the faith, the world is pulling the Christians towards them. And we allow ourselves to be lured into the wide world of destruction of this world. One of my favorite animals is the chameleon. You know a chameleon? This is a chameleon. Okay, yeah, chameleon yan. So a chameleon, it changes color. Okay? So pag nasa bato siya, nagiging brown siya. Pag sa meron, siya, meron siyang leaves, green, nagiging green siya. Yung sa baba, di ko alam kung nasa siya dito. Eh. Nasa ocean ba siya dito? Ba't iba yung kulay niya? Anyway, kaya ako po pinapakita ito is because there has to be something that the chameleon is doing that would relate to all of us here in this place. It's about our Christian walk. You see, a chameleon, it can change its color depending on adapting its to an external environment. But you know what? The chameleon, even though it changes and adapts to an environment, 
will never change its DNA. Meaning, itong kamilyo na to, yung diet niya, yung pa yung nakakainin niya kahit nag-iba siya ng kulay. This chameleon would not change the sound. Kwak, kwak, kwak. Na, uh, paano ba mag-sound ang ano? <laughs> kwak, kwak, kwak. Dak pala yun. Mala, mala, mala. But whatever the sound of a chameleon is, you know what? Even if it changes or adopts its color, it will never change its sound. Right? So why am I saying this? If you're moving from master to, to from, ser- from working for a master to serving the master, you will have to be a chameleon. What's that? Meaning, you might be able to adapt to a different environment, but your DNA, who you are inside, will never change. Your values, your attitude, your, your perspective, that doesn't change. So, mapahirat ka man sa matinding maboss o sa super bait na boss, ganun pa yun ang productivity mo. At yun po yung ibig sabihin ng chameleon. Why is that important? Because when you realize that your place in an environment where you are going to be used by the Lord, this is what's going to happen. Screen, please. This is what's going to happen. You will then move from just another worker, you will now become the appointed steward. So, steward ka na. Meaning, God has placed you there. Stewardship has the idea of giving you, using what has been given to you correctly. That's what a steward means. So, so when you are an appointed steward, what you do with your time, what you do with your talents, whether you work or serve or whatever you do, you do it for God's own glory. Yung po yung appointed steward. So ngayon, pag appointed steward ka na, iba na. Kasi alam mo na, ang Panginoon sa'yo ang nagdala sa'yo doon. The Lord placed you there. And because the Lord placed you there, He must have a mission for you over there. What is your mission? If you, if you decide to accept, is that, is that is that you will be now the salt and light in that place. You will never fully realize the extent of how could use you if you're not bold in sharing who you are in Christ, the people around you. Alam ba kung bakit kami passionate in in, in, in filling this place up with singles. Alam niyo ba kami passionate? Because we want to fill this place to, so much so that we would encourage, bring more people into the movement so when you guys go back to your community, when you go back to your offices, when you go back to your family, you know what? You're going to share to them what you have been hearing here, what you've been hearing here, what you've been realizing how God has been so amazingly good to each one of us here. And then do that over there. You know why that's important? Because the people over there cannot be reached by the church. It is you. The marketplace is the blue ocean. That, that, is, the, that is the challenge. There's so much opportunity to share Christ in the marketplace, in your office. And you need to be the stewards for that. But the problem is, look at the command of Paul. And do it not only when their eyes on you, and to curry their favor. So, ibig sabihin daw ng everything, ibig sabihin daw ng, de- ng everything is that it also means not only when their eye is on you. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng eye on you? Can I share to you what that means? It tells eye service. Alam mo ba eye service? Ang tawag po dito nung, eight, nung, nung mga 90s or 2000, EPAL. Yung mga EPAL? Ano ba ang millennial term ng EPAL? Meron ba millennial term? O oh, millennial yun. Ano yung newer term of that? Papapel. Whatever it is. Epal means you're only doing it because the boss is watching you. Nakakita na ba yung ganun? Yung tamad na tamad, pero pagdating ng boss, si boss! Si Walter, pagod na pagod. Ay, boss, malami na nagawa. Pag alis, ay, nako. Pagod. Pero walang ginawa. Right? Ayun po yung sinasabi ni Paul that, you know what? If you're doing that, if you're just really impressing the boss, then I am not your boss. Because God can always see what we're doing. Yung mga pakuha-kuha ng, ng mga extra battery. Diba? Uy, dalawa yung battery. Apat yung battery sa, pa- sa pakete, dalawa lang ginamit sa mouse. Uy, dalawa, uwi ko na sa bahay ito. Sayang eh. Kasi mayroon din akong mouse sa bahay. Akala ko wala makakita, but you know what? When say, not only when their eyes on you, and look, and to curry their favor. This is major. I don't want to talk about this because we're going to talk about it next week. Office politics. This is major. Right? I don't know if it's, it's common now, but before, it's, it's, it's common. And, and there, are, there are people 
who really just do things because they want to make sip sip. Right? They just want to, you know, one of the things that I come, came across is a confidential survey. A confidential survey that on the average, people, people in the workplace, they goof. Alam mo yung goof? What's the Tagalog goof off? Yung sumisimple, right? Sumisimple sila on the average seven hours a week. Seven hours. Kayo ba? Ten hours a week or eight hours a week? But when say goof off, walang ginagawa for seven hours a week in the workplace. The same survey reveals that 50% of the workplace now admits to chronic malingering. Alam niyo chronic malingering? Chronic malingering is yung hindi ka may sakit, pero may sakit ka. <laughs> Yan po yung chronic malingering. Yung meron ka lang, medyo may konting sakit na ulo, mabigat, migraine na. Yung tipong medyo nasisir ka lang, LBM na. Yun po yung chronic malingering. That isang bagay lang, may isang rason ka lang di pumasok, kunin mo na agad. Why is that? You know why? The root cause of that is people don't want to go to work. Because they have the wrong perspective towards work. But if you have the right perspective towards work, that this is not about your boss, this is not just about finances, but really it's about honoring the Lord. You know what? Amazing things will happen to you. Same survey also shared that 25% of those that are working now said that they would accept doing things illegally to get ahead of their job. Wow. Illegally to get ahead of their job. Bago, tayo mag, bago po tayo mag, mag-judge ng mga tao, baka sometimes guilty tayo dito. Ako, guilty-guilty ako dati. Yung representation ko dati. Ang representation ko dati, saksakan ng laki. So, lahat po ng tao na yung libre ko. Pero ginagawa ko po doon, ibang tao na lagi kong mga pangalan. Paminsan tatawag ako talaga sa kaibigan, Uy, na- last week nag-dinner nag- nag- tayo, ha? ikaw nilagay ko eh. Pero actually, hindi siya. Parang just tawagan, i-audit ako, hindi ako mauhuli. And that is exactly what it means to curry their favor. And that's exactly what it means to really provide this wrong view of work. So what is Paul saying? What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying is that we have an opportunity to let our light shine so we will be a person that would be viewed as someone who is a guy or a, or a lady of integrity, a guy or a lady who is with humility in the workplace or in the business. And you can only do that, you know what, how? When you realize that you are an appointed steward. You will realize and desire that if you sincerely believe that God has placed you there for a purpose. Because you know what? If you know that God is the one who brought you there, and you're going to goof around, magiging mag, 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 wrong testimony ka, may hiya ka eh. Kasi alam mo, ang Panginoon ang lagay sa'yo doon. And that, brothers and sisters, is going to be a game-changing perspective. Here's the principle. God wants each one of us to work at our jobs with faithfulness and efficiency. Yun po yung principle. Kaya po sinabi niya, with the sincerity, with all your heart. Alam niyo po yung the word of sincerity, what's that word? Sincerity means open. Sincerity means simple. Yan po yung sabi ng sincerity. Yan po yung sabi ng original word niyan. Yan po yung context. So when you say open or simple, that means people could see. Kaya sincere. People could see in your heart. Ano ba yung motive mo? So ang motive mo is to serve the Lord. And people see that in you. Meaning, wala kang ibang motive, mas madaling maging consistent sa mga actions natin. Mas madaling maging motivated to do our best. Kasi hindi nila sisabihin, ah, ginagawa mo lang ito kasi gusto mong ba-impress. No. Look, look at what the Bible is saying. You need to do with the sincerity of the heart. That means, whatever you're doing, you need to go beyond working to impress your boss. The person with pure motives operates with a focus, with a singleness of purpose. And what's that? To honor and to glorify the Lord. And that's why it says, but with sincerity of the heart and reverence for the Lord. That means respect. Reverence means respect. Fearing the Lord means you need to work out because you respect the Lord. God wants you to work at, at your work because He is your boss. Let me ask you a question. Imagine, where are you ever? Are you working now or you're in business? I, I just bear this with me. Imagine that you're beside the highest rank officer of your company. Highest rank, ha? Yung, kumana, kung may presidente, kung may, may mataas pa doon, may owner pa, kunwari, imagine mo katabi mo. 
Eh, hey, pagkat nabi mo yun, 24 hours a day, sa isang araw mo sa trabaho. Uh, I think I have uh, 60 minutes. Okay, anyway. So, uh, kunyari katabi mo yung, katabi, katabi mo yung, kunyari katabi mo yung boss mo, right? And, you're, and when you're with your boss, and uh, you now are with him, do you think you will be petix? Do you think you will relax? Do you think you will not be ganahan? In fact, if the boss is there, ganado lahat ng tao, di ba? If ever said so, I, so that's the same principle here. If you realize that the Lord is with you, then kaganahan ka. Kahit yung trabaho mo, ano? Tiga staple lang. Hindi, <laughs> assuming lang, assuming, right? Gaganahan ka noon. Kasi para sa Lord to eh. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, sa ito, Right? So what's the, what's the principle? The principle is when you say you want to work in reverence for the Lord, it means that the Christian would serve his employer from an inner monitor, the monitor of character. That's what it means when you say reverence for the Lord. So how do we apply this on the how of work? The Christian worker works from his character. And what is his character? That means when you're working in a re- doing for their revere and respect for the Lord, that means you're going to be trustworthy. That means you will deliver when you say you will deliver. That means when you are reliable, that you will provide. That means when you say this, you will do it. Can you imagine that if that is you? Can you imagine that if that is you? And anywhere, even though wherever you are, whatever place, wherever work, whoever you your boss, even if the boss is watching or not, you will do everything because you fear the Lord. So let me ask you a very personal question. When you're bogged down, let's say you are, you are in a frustrating assignment, do you give up? Or do you see it as a chance to grow in perseverance? Answer that in yourself. Or when you're in the workplace and you're tempted to do something unethical, unethical practice, do you yield to that unethical practice? Or do you take it as a chance to grow in your honesty? Good question to ask. Or when you hear a friend, office mate being slandered, do you just become silent? Or do you stand up for a friend and defend that person? That's another question you need to ask yourself. Or, when you're irritated, asar na asar ka sa isang tao, sa opisina mo, na yung boses pa lang, naiinis ka na. Right? Do you criticize that person? Do you belittle that person? Or, do you grow in acceptance and tolerance of that person? Alam mo, lahat ng mga sagot po doon, will actually depend on your perspective towards work. And that's why it says in verse 23, work what it with all your heart. All your heart. What does all your heart mean? It's, it's an it's a expression that means everything. God wants us to give everything. Heartily means out of the soul. So whatever we do, we do it with something that is genuating from our soul, from the inner passion. That's why mga tao, kahit anong pinagawa mo, basta passion nila yun, gagawin nila yun. Right? Because that's from the inner passion that they have. So what does that mean? Whatever work that we already do, we're now, in our, we're now in our what? So what does that mean? It means excellence. The principle is God wants us to discharge our job with enthusiasm. All work is sacred before the Lord. Nothing is unimportant when we serve the Lord, right? Because, look, you are working at it with all your heart because you are working for the Lord. And you're not working for human masters. Not for human masters. Folks, God does not want us to just realize that we're serving an earthly boss. God wants us to widen our vision and our perspective towards work and realizes that our earthly boss is just one of those people that we look up to, but ultimately our boss is up there in heaven, which is Jesus. God is our ultimate employer. And that's why... Right? In view of keeping what we do, what we honor, why, why is that so? What, what, what is the motivation behind it? It's because in verse 24, it says you will have an inheritance. You will have an inheritance. You know, one of the things I realized that for you to understand that there's an inheritance, you need to believe that God is your father. Ultimately, he's your creator. Unless you realize that, you will never believe that there's an inheritance. By the way, what is an inheritance in Tagalog? Mana. Ang mana ba pinaghihirapan o binibigay? 
believe you guys. So the more you understand this, you realize that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Meaning there is something that He's storing up for you. And you know what? The reason I, want, I wanted to stop at verse 24 is because this really, really impacted my life so much. You know why? Because people nowadays, they go to work and they view it as a rat race. Do you know what a rat race is? A rat race is yung nasa isang paikot-ikot lang na walang pinupuntahan. It's a rat race. And they hate every minute of it. And when it dawns upon the Christian that he's actually serving the Lord, that he's actually honoring the Lord with his work, and the Lord brought him there, it changes his perspective. And then now there's a new quality in his workplace. Iba na yung approach niya, iba na yung mangyayari sa kanya. And this is exactly, as I wind down my message this evening, this is exactly what happened to me. This is what happened to me, and I'll share to you quickly my testimony. Before I went into full-time ministry, I used to work in a corporate world, just like explained earlier by, by, by B-Boy. So more than about 15 years ago, or more actually more about 20 years ago, I, when I started my corporate stint, I worked for one of the biggest companies in the Philippines. Uh, after working for only less than a year in that said company, my boss was promoted to original position, which, op- which op- I'm reading my testimony para may kliyan ko, kasi pag nagsalta ako, mahaba eh. So binabasa ko na lang. Which opens to... So, so my boss got promoted to a position outside the Philippines in a regional office, and therefore, yung departmental position niya, hinahawakan niya, was vacant. And all of a sudden, I found myself promoted to this new department a little bit over a year in this company. And so, all of, so, as I, so I said, wow, the, one of the biggest companies in the Philippines, I'm head of a department, power, fame, glory. I was given that every perks that you would like to have. Okay, I, uh, I got a nice car, I, I had golf shares, I had a corner office in one of the newest buildings in Makati, in Ayala, and, uh, and all of these things that uh, I had. So, but deep inside, I was still longing for something. I didn't know. I was anxious in life. What well, am peace. Something that I didn't know until God allowed trials in my life. You see, I was, I was asking myself, how come I have all of these things and yet I'm not totally contented? How, how come I have all of these things and yet I feel so stressed? How come I have all of these things, nice car, nice work, good pay, everything, and yet I still feel that there's something always lacking, right? You see, one of the things that the Lord allowed into my life in the workplace that after I got promoted, a group of individuals, they created a malicious story about me getting money from the company. So they fabricated a lies and wrote a letter to our country chairman that time that I received a certain amount of cash, which, which of course was never been proven because I did not receive any. Even though the case was dropped, it tainted how the company looked at me, and when they got a chance, they demoted me. And one of the most humiliating times was when they moved me from my corner office, I had in my corner office, they moved me to an office right beside my secretary. It was a window, it was, a, it was an office with no windows, so it just me the rest of my staff, and my secretary. And months after that, my, cher- my most cherished material possession, my car, was also stolen while attending a Bible study. Then months after that, I, I had suffered so many uh, painstaking situations in my life that I don't have the time to explain to you, but trust me, it was very, very painful. It was the turning point in my life. I said, Lord, I surrender all of these things to you. I'm already a, a follower of you, but I haven't really committed everything to you, Lord. And so I went down on my knees and said, Lord, with all of these things, please make me realize what is your plan? Why do I have to go all of these things? Why is it so humiliating? Why is it so hard? Why is all of this suffering? Why are all of these things being taken away from me? Until I realize, wait, 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 wait. In the workplace, it's the Lord that I'm serving. And whatever I do, I need to do it for the Lord. And so I started slowly but surely putting that perspective into my life as I became serious in my walk with the Lord. I started to change my perspective. Dati, ayaw, ayaw pumasok. In fact, I wanted to resign so many times. But the Lord did not allow me to resign. Ang sayo ko kasi sa Panginoon, Lord, I will only resign kapag meron na kapalit na trabaho. And, and you know what? I was interviewed so many times. I interviewed panel Chairman interview, talaga puro ga- owner of the company, ang tami ko pinig plan almost there, almost going to be accepted, but last minute, hindi na tutuloy. 
So I kept on telling, asking the Lord, Lord, why is this so? Perhaps you have a plan. And so I changed my perspective. I now started to really, hey, Lord, what do I have now? What, how can I do, how can I work with you with all my heart? So I ako ngayon, Lord, how can I actually become your messenger in this workplace? You see, one of the things I do before was I was the head of the advertising of our, of our company. And so I did a lot of advertising, print ads. So ginawa ko, one of the things I really realized, the Lord allowed me to realize, is that, Ikoy, why not become a person who is passionate about Jesus in your office? In your office. Huh? Sabi ko, everybody looks at me with so much disdain that I, was, that I should be resigning, but I'm still here, right? And so I said, okay, I'm going to change my perspective. So in business, po, I had to drag myself into work. I started to become more excited towards work. I kept asking the Lord, Lord, ano po ang plano? what's your plan? And one of the plans was really, look, you need to tell these people that becoming a follower of Jesus is okay. That's one of the things he first started me to realize. So what I did is that I was exposed to a lot of Christians. So what I did was I brought some of these Christian brothers into, into, uh, into the fold and made them my models, my commercial models. So if you notice, that's Pastor Omar 15 years ago, I think. Okay, and then that's BJ and that's, uh, that's George and that's Philip. And so, so what did I do? I invited Christian people. I brought them as my models. Not only that, I hired ad agencies that are Christians. I, I, I hired people, designers that are Christian. And I hired all of them because I told myself, hey, Lord, my work is now your work, meaning you place me here for a purpose. And your purpose here, Lord, is that I will follow you, I will serve you, I will work with you with all my heart. So, ginawa ko po, ginawa ko lahat yan. Nakita niyo ba yun sa baba? Hindi makita, di ba? Yan po, eh, actually, eh, si Mike Yap. Siya yung speaker natin nung naaralan yung speaker natin dati. Eh? Yan si Mike Yap, ganang kapayat po yun. Nung 18 years old yata si Mike dito. He was a speaker two, two, three weeks ago. I got them because I really want them to be what? Testimonies. Kasi ano nangyayari? Ano nangyayari is when we are in the shoot, they interact with my office mates. They become more active in their testimony. And then slowly but surely, what my office mates saw was that, hey, a Christian is not baduy. A Christian is sometimes cute, but not all the time, right? But that's okay, right? And as I say, Christians, you know what? They're nice to talk to. And so when I invited them now to attend a Bible study after I became a, a, a serious divine walk with the Lord, the Lord opened that up to more people, opening up to a Bible study I started in the in the. In the in the workplace. I don't, I don't have the time, so I need, I need to hurry up. Another thing that the Lord allowed me to become, do at work with it with all your heart, is because I was given an enough exposure in media. Because I was handing the, the brand of, of, of Caltex, I was brought into a lot of guesting, TV, radio. And so when, when we did uh, Amazing Race, I don't know if you recall, we, had, we did an Amazing Race, and we did an NBA uh, tie-up, all of these things. I go into... I go into radio stations. That's uh, Monster. That is uh, Joe DiMaggio. I don't know if you remember that guy. It's an old guy. And uh, that's Dylan uh, MX. And you know, the, the other one is, uh, this is uh, Mo Twister. Um, the other one is uh, Jam 88. So in short, I went around stations and they interviewed me for the brand. But I also used it as a means to share my faith. You know, you know the, the brand of our product before Techron is Cleancher Engine, right? Cleancher Engine. That's the, oh, ano yun, ha? Brand yun para sa nanonood sa social media. Get Caltex all the time. Anyway, joke lang. <laughs> so, so I, I was really, the, the, the brand was Techron Cleancher Engine. So I used that as a means to share my faith. I told them on air, you know, amazingly, there's also one thing that cleans our soul. Jesus Christ, he cleans our soul because he takes away all our sins. And I say that on live. And, and you know what? The, 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 the host, the, the DJ, they would, you know, what did they say? When they said that, what did they say? Amen. They just amen. Why? Because I now became more bold. I now became more aggressive. I now became the steward. I now became, from wanting to become a master, I now wanted to serve. 
And that is the biblical concept of work because you will now have your significance on whatever God has placed you in your specific role you are right now. But you need to understand that perspective. You need to see it. You know, one, one last story. You know, the biggest campaign that I ever did before I left to, and went to full-time ministry was a multi-million dollar campaign about creating a, a, a jingle, a, a theme song for our, for our brand, right? And so what I did was I realized that I can get a Christian singer to sing that jingle so that it could be a Christian person. Remember, my desire was to bring people, and that's why Kichi Nadal is there, because we got Kichi to sing a song for us, a theme song. But amazingly, when I was looking for her, when I was searching for her, coincidingly, at that specific time, she was coming up with an album. She was coming up with an album. So she said, instead of us, instead of her just giving us a song, why don't she give us an entire album? And so this is her album. It's called Kitchen Adal Love Letters. I took an excerpt of that song. It says, You are the highway. Apart from you are roads downhill. You are the highest way, the truth and the life. There is no other road for me. Does that sound familiar? Is, is, is it a verse? It's what verse? John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so when, when this song went into the airwaves, the gospel was being played on the airwaves. The gospel was being shared to so many people. And the gospel was being heard by countless of individuals who might have been listening to a song, but they're actually listening to God's message to each one of them. That at the end of the day, Jesus is the only way. You know, th there are so many songs in this album. It's all Christian. And so when that came out, people were... I was shocked. I said to myself, Dako, hindi to dala, hindi to papasa. Kasi puro Christian lyrics, puro Christian song. And we're a secular company. You know, I said, hindi to papasa. You know what? My boss called me. I, I remember that day. Because this is the song. Eh? This, this is the theme song. I never heard this yet, but my boss heard it. So yung boss ko tumawag sa akin, sabi sa akin, ikaw eh, narinig mo na ba yung theme song? Ako, sabi ko, eto na. Narinig mo na ba yung theme song? Sabi ko, hindi pa po, ma'am. Hindi pa po, ma'am. Alam sabi niya sa akin, matutuwa ka. Bakit? Eh, kasi Christian na Christian eh. And then I said, what? And then when I listened to it and I saw it, I was just blown away. Because I knew that God orchestrated in such a way that His Word would be shared to so many people. You know, I asked the band to, to sing one song, not this song, but one song in this album, and I asked them to share it to you. And this pictures truly what it means when you realize that there is a reward. You know, the reward is not only out of this world, meaning after you die, which is eternal reward. Which that's amazingly the best gift ever, the best reward ever. But there's a bonus. You know what's the bonus? The bonus is what you experience now. And how you experience now is, con is the thing that you will never experience apart from, Christ, apart from Christ Jesus. And what's that? Peace, contentment, and grace. And now you realize that you, it's, it's work becomes fun. Work becomes enjoyable. Work becomes exciting because you now realize that you're working for the Lord, not for people. And that you would do everything with all your heart because you're working for the Lord. That means excellence and thoroughness. And that means for some of us here who've experienced God's calling to really use Him, Him, offer Himself to, to God for God to use, and we have experienced that, we've experienced the amazing grace that only Jesus can provide. And so while, this, while the band is singing this song, I want you to meditate on the entire message. And I'm going to come back again and, and close us in prayer. But as we are singing this song, let's meditate. Lord, what is this that you really want me to experience? What is this change of perspective that you want me to really do? And allow us to really minister to be by the Spirit alone through this song.